Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great uh, day to this point. I uh, hope you're closing out your week on a good note. Uh, those who have been following know that I've been working on a series of series. Uh, weekly series on different topics that plague the community. So that can be a stacked uh, set of videos, lectures, conversations about things where you don't have to scroll all through to find uh, cohesive topic conversation. So uh, there are going to be four to five videos each week on a specific topic. Doesn't mean that's the only thing I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to commit to doing that. This week is the miseducation of black youth in America. I'm going to sort of augment a little bit today to talk about some things I think that we need to understand, uh, let you know where my mind is at and let you know what I think some of the biggest problems are as far as having the capacity to actually autonomously uh, educate and empower our youth. For uh, the sake of clarity, um, I'm going to once again give you my definition of education. If education is not simply the acquisition of uh, or, or the accumulation of academic skills, it is the total and full empowerment and preparation of black youth to go, grow up and go out into a world as adults, into a, a world that's inherently hostile towards them and not only compete but win. That preparation begins at the moment of identity. Last night I talked to you about the importance of identity as it pertains to young black males and why uh, when a male is not properly socialized and properly associated with a uh, definitive and clear identity, it ends up with disruptive behavior as they age. And uh, we, we failed in that. We're failing in so many other areas in our responsibility to empower our youth. Malcolm told us that only a fool expects his enemy to educate his children to compete with theirs. And yet, here we are. Uh, so that's the definition. So uh, I talked about that yesterday. What I want to talk about now is the black state of mind in our own identity crisis because we're dealing with generation after generation of miseducation. Remember, Carter G. Woodson was talking about miseducation back in the 20s and 30s. So this isn't a new subject. It's an evolved subject. It has evolved in its impact, evolved in its mechanisms and machinations, evolved in its presentation, but the result is the same. Blacks at the bottom of the socioeconomic uh, latter powerless and hopeless, um, a rising crime rate, rising incarceration rate, rate an expanding uh, wealth gap, uh, and so much more. And so when I look at this, what I see is a people who are completely disconnected, unaware, unmotivated, and misguided in their actions, behaviors, their desires, their hopes, and, and so many but so many other things. Let me let me explain to you what I'm talking about here. Um, one of the things I do is research the gathering of data uh, systematically um, and structurally to examine and explore ideas, truths, uh, concepts hypotheses, theories, so forth, so forth. Um, there are so many different places you can get this data. You can conduct studies, you can do interviews, you can uh, gather existing data. Let me tell you something. One of the places I get an enormous part of my data is social media. And, and the thing is, what you need to understand is I'm not the only person gathering information on you. They are. They are doing it and they have the tools and the resources to do it at a much grander level. You are literally telling them by your behavior how to manipulate you, how to control you. This research, market research is simply the studying of engagement data to determine buying uh, habits.
habits, uh, what drives buying habits, uh, what a particular group's buying habits are. And not only is it happening on social media, but your devices are full of apps that are selling your buying habits and your behaviors, which can then be broken down by experts to determine your psychological makeup, what drives you, what motivates you, and to, de to determine how to move the majority of the masses in a direction that those in power see fit. Well, when I observe what I'm looking at, when I'm collecting data, is that we, we aren't purposed. We're literally content with complaining. We're content with warring amongst ourselves. We are content with uh, whining and, 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 and complaining about our jobs, whining and complaining about social environments, whining and complaining about our children being killed by police officers, whining and complaining about poor uh, environments and situations, mass incarceration, gentrification. We'll love to talk about it. We'll stop in, we'll watch uh, podcasts, we'll click it, we'll share it, we'll make it go viral. So what even happens is the people who have the ability and the voices eventually realize that I'm up here warring to create a movement and nothing's happening. So what do they do? They monetize their platform. They start putting up content that has no real juice, but is sensational. They start earning money off of the pain of black people. They started out trying to fight for black people, but realized black people weren't involved. I see it over and over and over again. People who started out trying to spread a message and realized that black people were never going to catch on and it was never going to be the juice and realized they were burning themselves and they decided, hey, everybody else getting rich on them and getting rich off of them, I might as well too. So many times it would have been so easy. And I have these conversations with uh, my colleagues and people that I hold extremely dear. And the reason I keep them as friends is because of their integrity in conversations like this. I said, man, I wish I didn't have that integrity. I wish I didn't have that. I wish I could just sit up because it would be so easily knowing what I know, because I guarantee you very few people are gathering data at the level that I'm gathering it and breaking it down to understand it, to create solutions. Uh, everybody's happy with just doing tours and, and lecturing and getting paid and all of that good stuff. And I have no problem with someone who's bringing the truth, getting paid. It's, it's their life work. Everybody uh, uh, deserves to get paid for bringing value to someone else's life. I have no problem whatsoever uh, with that. My issue is when it's being done and there's nothing of value really truly being brought to the table that it's all about uh, gassing people up and doing a bunch of things of that nature. But let me tell you what happens. Spaces like Facebook, let's just say Facebook, for instance, not to mention YouTube and all the others, Twitter and everything. Facebook literally allows you to request all of your data. You can go back as far as your first day on Facebook and you can request it. They will prepare a file for you and you download it. Now, here's the thing. Just in my data alone, I'm engaging people. I have uh, 13,000 followers plus 5,000 actual connected friends on one page. I can do this with every page I have. I have almost 30 pages to, because of different businesses and stuff like that. But just on the primary businesses on, on pages where there are connectivities where the predominant audience is black people. I download that data, then I can literally create algorithms and programs to break that down with different questions. For you know, and, and it's not hard. You do a search for X, Y, Z, and it's going to bring you all that data. You categorize that data, and you look at the behavior on that data. You look at the responses on that data. You can look at what posts get a bunch of. Uh, views, likes, and engagement. What posts get very few views, likes, and engagement. What people are talking about most. All this stuff is there. And you don't think they're gathering this. You don't think they're using this. You don't think this is why they're always several steps ahead of us. And we don't have a clue what's going on. Because they're using the tools differently than we are. And then when someone like myself comes along and says, this is what's happening. Uh, you get a twinkle. Okay, that's not all. Oh, thank you. And but everybody, and I've come to the conclusion 
we're good. We're good with being in last place. We're good with being stumped on, stepped on, and kicked. We're good with just being able to whine and complain and throw fits. Why? Because the opportunities to do something has been there. The opportunities to do something was there long before Rick Wallace ever touched the ground. There have been some great minds that came before me. There are some great minds riding with me, and there will be great minds after me, and yet no progress. So then you have to ask yourself with all this information that we have that's in front of us. This isn't 1950 anymore. This is 2023. We've got everything that they've got at our disposal. We have to go about a different way in getting it. They pass it along the good old boy way. We have to go out and actually do it. Why? Because we won't even connect with one another. We won't deal with one another. We've literally been conditioned by the very mechanisms I'm talking about to hate one another, to distrust one another, to sit up and try to outdo one another and compete with one another. All of these mechanisms that could be helping us are working against us and we don't see it. That's a form of miseducation. That's a form of willful ignorance as well. That's us sitting up and saying, it's just, that's too much work. That's too much of a sacrifice. That individualism that's created in these same annals is gonna be the death of the black community. The, that, as long as I'm good, to hell with the rest of my attitude, that long as that's not my business uh, attitude that I ain't getting involved at all of those individualized concepts and philosophies are going to be the death of the black community. You know, that uh, everybody can't come along, uh, uh, just the ones who got it need to go. It's definitely going to be the death of the black community. Here's why. The ones who got it were meant to inform the ones who didn't. You didn't get it just for you to get it and bounce. You get it because there's some people behind you that didn't get it. And remember what Malcolm said. Malcolm said, be very careful when you get to a point of awareness, how you handle people who aren't aware because you didn't always know. But yet I see people with the mindset of uh, some people, and, and I get frustrated, I do, but I understand that I think it's unfair for everybody to think that everybody's going to all of a sudden get this epiphany at the same time. You got to understand programming is real. And when you've been programmed for generation after generation after generation, it's hard to break. But what we can't do is sit up and say, okay, well, some of us got it, let's bounce. Where are you bouncing to? Because after they, after they meet their destructive, they're literally your insulation. What you don't get is those people you're looking down on, they're bigger in number. They consider the greater threat because if they ever wake up, the number and the magnitude of what they can do in that number, the, the, the more you dilute the number, the more you weaken them. Why do you think they're whitening the black population through the push for interra uh, interracial, interracial relationships? You got to understand this. The white population isn't going to be able to sustain its majority indefinitely at the rate that it's reproducing itself. So it's manufacturing the next generation of what whiteness looks like while diluting and breaking down what blackness will be. And the more and more people that sit up and stop identifying as black and start identifying as biracial dilutes the black number. Then you take the black number and say, okay, now there's going to be a classism elitism thing going on in the black community and not just based on money but based on knowledge I know how to navigate this system I know how to win in this system you don't oh well I'm gonna go over here I'm better than you no you just learned before they did now it's your responsibility to teach them and trust me teaching somebody something that's diametrically opposed to what's been programmed into their psyche is a challenge and it's easy for people to give up. Giving up is the easiest fucking thing you can do. Standing in and fighting and making a move and pushing past something is, is hard. It's what separates average and mediocre, mediocrity from greatness. There's a bunch of people out there that have decided, man, I figured this thing out. And are doing good, take care of their family. Nobody will never know who they are beyond themselves. And to some people, that's okay. I'm about legacy. I'm about something bigger than what's in my bank account and where I live. It's about more how I move. It's about legacy. What? See, 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 
I want my great great grandkids grandkids to have a pride in who they are that's connected to me the way that the, 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 the descendants of Frederick Douglass feel the way the descendants of Carter G. Woodson feel the way the descendants of Marcus Garvey feel the way the descendants of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King feel I want that type of thing I, I'm not trying to be them I don't want to be them I got my lane but I want to work and do that's why I fight but I'm going to call a spade a spade we are going to destroy ourselves for lack of ignorance what does it say my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge what most people don't say when they when they quote that scripture is the next word said because you have rejected knowledge it says well, because you have rejected knowledge I will reject your children what it's saying your ignorance is going to be the, the, the consequences of your ignorance is going to be passed down to your offspring we better start caring on that note look I'm going to get ready to get out of here but uh, this is my version of the series for today. The miseducation of black youth is willful black ignorance is destroying the black community. Um, before I get off, look, if you believe in the work that I do, if you believe in the passion at which I operate, if you believe in the consistency of my message, if you believe that every year uh, I've been going hard in the paint. This isn't something new for me. I didn't pop up. This ain't no hustle for me. I've been doing this thing long before you knew who Doc was. And I've been doing it for 14 years strong here on social media. Not just talking to you, but delivering. I've been delivering. How many people contact me weekly with something going on in their life and their family? And I answer the bell. We need your support. Look in the description box at the top of the description box and determine which one of those methods you want to support and support the work we do. You don't believe in me? Why are you even on the channel? You know, if you question who I am, why are you on the channel? Because I'm going to tell you something. I learned a, a, a long time. The numbers don't matter to me. I'm, I'm not a person that needs my ego stroke. So uh, when I get a new subscriber and the subscriber count goes up, my my my, my self-worth doesn't increase. Uh, or when people get mad because of something I post and I call people out and my subscriber number drops, it does, my self-worth doesn't decrease. I want to impact this world that I'm in and I want to impact the people who visit this page. I want to give you something to think about. You don't have to agree, but it should definitely challenge you to think. You should at the very minimum say, I need to go check this out. I need to see what he's talking about. With that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here, but I had to drop that on you. That That's my thing for the day. And I mean, it goes, like I said, literally, I have just an abundance of data I have several friends who are software writers I'm about to actually go in and sit down and talk to one of them right now uh, software writers and programmers and they write the programs for me to break this stuff down and you think if I'm doing it little old Rick is doing it you don't think they're doing it and you don't think that the stuff they're feeding you through these devices through these mechanisms on social media in the movies in the music all this stuff isn't literally set up by that they have 1300 think tanks that they use to come up with devices and machinations and mechanisms and components and schemes to keep you off balance and it's obviously working the odyssey projects and the harvest institute are the two primary ones that i can think about that even has a major think tank where minds come together to come up with solutions everybody else is just talking I'm not taking shots at anybody. I'm just, when I say everybody, I mean everybody. I'm not talking about any one person. For the people out there that's doing that thing, I love you and I, I'll hold you up and I'll back you up. Uh, even if I'm not a fan, I, I, if you out there trying to do your thing for the black community, I'm gonna hold you up and I'm never gonna, you're gonna never see me taking shots at black brothers or black sisters. When I, I see them, as long as I don't think you really truly the soul my people out, if you're really trying to get it, and I don't like your mood or your move or your vibe. I know how to stay out of your way. 
but I'm not going to come and attack you and create more of a schism and a split between our people. You know, that, that would definitely, you know, that's some people I know some stuff about that I could go after that would definitely take my subscribership up. That's, that's, that's not how I want to get out. Now, if I see you truly doing something to screw, you, some people just move in a way that rubs you in the wrong way, handle things the right way. And some people might think that about me, cool. But if I really think that you're doing something that's helping my people, do your thing. Everybody can't get down together. Everybody can't move together. That's not how it works. But what we can do is move in the same direction and show love and respect to one another. And so that's my challenge. So again, if you believe in the work I'm doing, show some love and uh, show some support. On that note, I'm ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of 